All yep. of us, there was not many of us in between Congress and our ensemble cast that were d digging deep into this. I count maybe 25 people total taking on the entire media mob. They were all wrong. My question to you is, what does this say to you and what does it say to Durham? The FBI went to then-candidate Trump, told him Russia might try to target you and your campaign. What they didn't tell him is, we're targeting you. They told him Russia might try to spy on you. What they didn't tell him is, we're spying on you. And they did it just 17 days into this investigation. It opens on July 31st, August 17th, they do this. 13 minutes for the defensive briefing, the, spark, the part of the, the briefing he's supposed to get. And then an hour and 42 minutes where they're trying to get information and set the president up. All this comes after, as you said, Sean, the August 8th text message where Peter Strzok says, we'll stop Trump, and the August 15th text message where he says, we got an insurance policy. And they start implementing that insurance policy two days later. Sarah Carter, you were there with John Solomon. It was March of 2017 when the whole unmasking thing began. I had a conversation with both of you. Soon thereafter, Greg Jarrett joined in. Got to keep on peeling the layers of the onion. I think it's now an infamous discussion we've had. Uh, absolutely, Sean. And look at these documents. They are explosive because if you think about it, there was August 2016. Here's Joe Pienka, right, debriefing basically Trump and Governor Christie and Michael Flynn. And then in January, he goes back to the White House with Peter Strzok. He goes back to the White House. Remember, he is the one that's interviewing Michael Flynn and collecting the information. All the while, just as Congressman Jordan says, they're spying on the president of the United States. You know, and this is something that is so explosive and so big. And if John Durham doesn't do his job, it doesn't mean that just these three were involved, Sean. What you have to think about is the scope of this. Both Pienka, Peter Strzok, as well as Kevin Kleinsmith and all the others were directed by people above them. That is Andrew McCabe. That's James Comey. And that's those folks that were at the White House, including the president, then uh, uh, Barack Obama, who knew everything that was going on in January 5th. And they need to be asked. Oh, Barack needs to answer. Right. What did he know? And when did he know it? Same with Joe. My question to you, Greg Jarrett, you wrote two number one bestselling books on this amazing work that you did on the legal side of this. What we now have in the public domain is enough to get indictments for all of these people as far as I'm yeah. concerned. You tell me as the lawyer if I'm wrong and why is it taking so long? At this point, I think that Prosecutor Durham has an obligation to get this over with and get let the American people know. We need to know before November 3rd of this year. Well, I think Durham has been slow footed. I agree. COVID may have slowed him down a bit. But if there was ever any doubt about how devious and corrupt James Comey and his cabal were, this should remove any doubt. This meeting was not about debriefing Trump. It was about gathering incriminating evidence of a non-existent collusion conspiracy that the FBI well knew was a hoax. They knew it was a lie paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign. They didn't care. At the heart of it, you're right, Joe Pienka, I write about him in my book. But interestingly, the government has scrubbed him from all reports, including the FBI report, the Department of Justice report, even the FISA court report. And the FBI has removed him from their website and sequestered him in San Francisco's field office, refusing to make him available, notwithstanding repeated demands to Congress. That's the cover up by the existing FBI director, Christopher Wray. And the other part of this equation is that the documents today, they're exculpatory. They tend to prove Trump's innocence. And yet the FBI and Christopher Wray have concealed these documents along with the intel mm -hmm. community for the better part of four years. It's unconscionable. Let it's me corrupt. go back it's to the cover up that, that we had a little problem with earlier. And let me hear it because this is Comey now denying that which we now know is true. This guy said the, the holier than thou, Mr. Higher Honor, is so full of beep, beep, beep. I can't even say it. I wish I could. I can say it, but I don't have to deal with the, you know, the fallout after. Here's what he said. <laughs> Was the FBI able to confirm any criminal allegations contained in the Steele document? Mr. Chairman, I don't think that's a question I can answer in an open setting because it goes into the details of the investigation. 
I want first to ask you about your conversations with the president, the three conversations in which you told him that he was not under investigation. The first was during your January 6th meeting, according to your testimony, in which it appears that you actually volunteered that assurance. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you limit that statement to counterintelligence investigations, or were you talking about any kind of FBI investigation? I didn't, I didn't use the term counterintelligence. I was speaking to him and briefing him about some salacious and unverified material. That proves, Jim Jordan, he lied. And when he signed yeah. the first FISA warrant in October of 2016 and then went to Trump Tower in, I believe it was December 2017, and said it's salation of some verified, well, on the FISA application, bulk of information, the dirty dossier, he said it was verified. He's a liar. Yeah, he told Gowdy during the deposition that President Trump wasn't under investigation when we now know based on this document that just 17 days into the investigation, they were investigating the president for no reason, no predicate whatsoever. He also told us during that deposition that after 10 months, when he gets fired May 9th, 2017, they didn't have a thing. We knew they didn't have anything. He knew they didn't have anything. Clapper, Brennan, Comey, they've all said the same thing. There wasn't anything there. And yet they put the country through this. I also think, think it's important, Sean, look at the names on the front page that Sarah was talking about. Klein Smith, the guy who lied to the FISA court. Pianka, who handles the Flynn investigation, who did this, this interview as well, or this briefing, whatever you call it. And then, of course, Peter Strzok, who ran the whole darn thing. Those are the three names on the front page, as well as Crossfire Hurricane. And imagine this, Crossfire Razor. They were after Mike Flynn from the get-go as well. That's what the front page of this document that was declassified today, that's what it shows us. All right. Thank you.